G'day folks. Well today I want to talk about the drain oiling system. Uh, and I'm, I've been I've been since I've remounted this car, I've hooked um, I've done a system like you see in the video there. It's a sort of a conventional drain back system for a rear mount turbo uh, where you've got the lines plumbed into the drain underneath the bottom of it with a scavenge pump as you can see there on the right of screen and it pumps the oil back to the engine whether it be in the valve cover or wherever you can mount it on the engine to uh, drain the oil back into. I've put mine on the where the oil uh, where the fuel pump used to be and it seems to work quite well there. Now the issues that I think pose a problem with rear mounting a turbo is the well it is the oiling system the return. Now this system I've got it works but I feel that I can really improve on this system look there may be some others out there that have actually done it and and I'm sure there are but I think I'm I think I've just dis discovered that's another word I like using discovered <laughs> I know I, I seriously I think I've come across the faults of a turbo uh, well they're not faults but the design of the turbo you've got to be mindful of it and one of the problems is with this system that I'm running it's a closed system yes it gets rid of the oil but you I think you have to understand as well and I'm only figuring this out that turbo drains need to breathe as well they need to be at a atmospheric pressure so basically no vacuum and no pressure inside the C what do you call it the CHRA center housing rotating assembly I think that's what they call it it has to be neutralized because there are no seals no rubber seals in a turbo uh, it relies and I will show you a video I've got a, my first turbo I've actually pulled apart and I'll show you this and this gives you a deeper understanding of what a turbo needs needs for it to run efficiently and to run without any basically no oil smoke coming out of either the the tailpipe from the turbine wheel or the compressor wheel and I've been getting a little bit of both coming out uh, when I come deaccelerate into a corner I get this tiny little whispery of smoke come out of the out of the car um, it done it with the other engine it's no different so you can rule out engine altogether it has done it with on the compressor side a tiny little bit in the drain pipe of this uh, in the drain pipe in the charge pipe of this turbo and it's taken me a little while just to to get an understanding of how a turbo needs to be installed in the sense of when you think about a front mount it has a, a fairly fat pipe I would be guessing three quarter inch uh, drain back to the sump now that can breathe to a point uh, I've noticed now here's another thing guys <clears throat> I have noticed that on drag cars on certain drag cars that are, are down the other end of the track and they're under high revs so basically maxing out their revs and all of a sudden you'll see this bit of blue smoke come out of them on turbocharged cars I'm talking about and then whether they're front mount or whatever there's this bit of smoke it's basically across the finish line and it's starting to make me wonder is it pressure from the engine case under full boost and high revs you get an actual pressurized system in the center of the turbo because of the engine because of the drain back set up on them and that's not allowing for it to breathe like it should so you're getting that a little bit of oil start to 
bypass into the turbine. That's quite possible. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm, this is actually happening because I've got a closed system under boost and pressure you would be getting roughly, they say roughly, double the pressure on the turbine side than you would on the compressor side. Just a general rule of thumb. So there is pressure either side. Now where does some of that pressure go? You don't have a rubber seal, so you don't have a perfect seal in your turbine side and your compressor side. You have an actual piston ring and I'll get to that. I'll show you the turbo that I've pulled apart again. And so you're going to get some uh, in a closed system like this you're going to get a build up of pressure. It's just, it's just going to happen. So that pressure built up in the under hard acceleration is fine for that time but as soon as you back off where does that pressure go that's already in the system? And it's a split second. It hasn't got time to get rid of it. So when you, you're off the throttle, bang, it's going to reverse back in to the uh, exhaust side and hence maybe a little bit into the uh, compressor side as well. You've got to remember, with hot oil, it's like water. And this all happens within an instant. Every time you're on and off the gas, you're getting this tiny whispery smoke. I'm getting tiny little bit of buildup of, of oil and this happens over time. It's not a thing that won't happen, you know, one or two times. This has happened over a 12 month, two year period. You get this build up and constant little puffs of smoke coming out. So, this is what I'm discovering, guys. Uh, so, my next step, my plan of attack, is to run a, a small reservoir style setup. And I'll get to that the details on that when I actually go to do it. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I've got, I've got some copper sheeting that I've got hold of and I'm going to make a nice box that'll hold at least roughly anywhere up to at least, I don't know, three to five hundred mils of oil and then I'm going to vent that box to atmosphere so it can breathe inside the centre of the turbo under boost it can breathe under vacuum it's not going to create any pressure any negative pressure so I don't have hopefully any sort of oiling issues that contribute to a rear mount style closed system turbo uh, a lot of people I think may run into this issue look to be honest, I am pushing this engine fairly hard into corners and whatnot. It's not just a little uh, quarter mile run, shut down, go again. It's a bit different style of um, of racing that I do. It's it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, lap after lap. So it, it, it tends to get a bit of a workout. So by doing this box, uh, the pump will do its job, keep draining the oil like it does, pumping it back up the front. And I'll have a reservoir of anywhere from 300 to 500 millimetres. Then I will have it vented nicely. And I'm going to vent it above into, oh, it's going to be at least probably 300 millimetres, 400 millimetres above the turbo vent pipe. Substantial size. And that will uh, vent nicely. And it should hopefully eliminate any oiling issues. Then when the engine shut down, it can drip out and it may hold one or two hundred mils of oil in there. Because I have noticed as well, guys, with... So I've done a lot of testing and, and, and um, trial and error with all this sort of setup. And I'm finding too, even if I turn the car off, run the pump for 30 seconds, then I've slipped round and I've undone the pipe and I've basically got no oil coming back from the pipe from the pump but I still have this tiny little drip every so often out of the turbo pipe. Um, and then I've left it off for a few days. Next thing you know I've got 50, 80 mils of oil. Now what's happening is I think is the feed line runs up over the 
over the um, arch well of the under the diff or over the diff following the body there's a certain amount of oil always in that so when the oil's hot it's like I said it's, it's like water and it just drips out over time so that's why I think my turbo too isn't draining properly when it's sitting idle it's filling back up again so like I said if I do this little box hopefully that'll allow for the oil to drain out of it completely so it keeps nice and dry so on startup it shouldn't be an issue again and I think that'll solve all my little oiling issues that I've had with this setup so yes I'm very keen to, to get it underway and, and, and do that so uh, I will post some vids and show you guys all the little details alright we'll go round and I'll show you the turbo itself I've got a this is my first turbo it's a little tiny little thing I put on it I, I did learn the hard way probably didn't do enough research on it but it lasted for a little while and it did the job but I want to show you what I mean about oil getting past the, uh, the seals now hopefully you can see that I'll bring it up here in the light there you go see that it's like a piston ring there's no rubber bushings or anything in there that's it see the other little looks like a pulley um, a little pulley uh, set up there well that's I think is like, a tur is like an oil splash guard because on the inside of the turbo uh, there's a bit that's sort of a rimmed around and that sort of helps stop the oil from working its way out and then you've got that little ring there too to try and stop it but under pressure I can guarantee you you will get oil coming back out through the turbine and the compressor wheel so it's a little journal bearing so that's getting an understanding of it all and then you can deal with the problem if you, if you know what causes it and what limitations are with certain things and can you see that down in there there you go just a, that's for the uh, journal bearing the oil feed yeah so anyway guys that's my little uh, discovery of what I've learnt and I hope that when I do all this it'll uh, solve a lot of little niggly issues and uh, yes look this is what the channel's all about guys learning and trying different things and I hope that you guys if, if this is a success uh, if you're thinking about doing it um, follow my path if you want it's up to you guys I'm only throwing it out there alright well I'm gonna put a video up again pretty soon on some more bits and pieces I'm about to start doing some MIG welding, so I'll uh, show you that and see how I progress with it. Alright guys, I'll catch you later.